Lesson 5.2, Factors and Divisibility. We can tell whether one number is a factor of another number by using a divisibility rule. A number is divisible by another number if the quotient is a counting number and there is nothing left over, there is no remainder. A factor of a number divides that number evenly with no remainder. The quotient will be a whole number and the remainder will be zero. We can use counters or a grid paper to make arrays to help us find factors, but some numbers may be too great for us to use counters or grid paper. Division is the quickest way to find factors for greater numbers. Is 3 a factor of 13? Well, we can't make three rows of equal groups. We've got one left over here, don't we? That row has too many. If we do 13 divided by 3, we ask how many times 3 can fit into 13. Well, 3 times 4 is 12. When we subtract, we get 1 for a remainder. We have 4 remainder 1. So no, 3 is not a factor of 13. 4 remainder 1 is not a whole number with no remainder. It has a remainder. So here are some divisibility rules. A number, or a dividend, is divisible by, which means evenly divided by, 2 if the number is even. So if our dividend is even, then it's divisible by 2. And it's divisible by 3 if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3. We'll have examples for each one of these, so hang on a second. 4, it's divisible by 4 if the number can be divided by 2 twice. It's divisible by 5 if the last digit is a 0 or 5. And it's divisible by 6 if the number is even and divisible by 3. And it's divisible by 9 if the sum of the digits is divisible by 9. A number is divisible by another number if the quotient is a whole number and there is no remainder. We want to see if 3 is a factor of 15. Is 15 divisible by 3? Well, 3 fits into 15 five times. 3 times 5 is 15. We subtract and get 0. 15 is divisible by 3. 3 is a factor of 15. There's no remainder. Is 16 divisible by 3? And is 3 a factor of 16? We do 16 divided by 3. We ask ourselves how many times 3 can fit into 16. It fits in 5 times. 3 times 5 is 15. We subtract and get 1 for a remainder. Because we have 1 for a remainder, 16 is not divisible by 3. And 3 is not a factor of 16. We have a remainder, so it's not. Is 3 a factor of 42? Well, the divisibility for 3 says a number is divisible by 3 if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3. And what that means is the sum of the digits, we take the 42 as a 4 and a 2, and we add the 4 and the 2 together. They equal 6. And if the sum of the digits, this 6, is divisible by 3, then 3 is a factor of 42. And 6 is divisible by 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. It's a nice whole number with no remainder. So 3 is a factor of 42. So again, to find out if it's divisible by 3, we add those digits together. We take the sum. So in this case, it's a 6. And if the 6 is divisible by 3, if the sum is divisible by 3, then that number is divisible by 3. And it's a factor. Is 6 a factor of 96? Well, the divisibility rule for 6 says a number is divisible by 6 if the number is even and divisible by 3. It ends with a 6, so it's even. So 96 is even, but is it divisible by 3? Well, the divisibility rule for 3, as we just saw, 
says a number is divisible by 3 if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3. So we take the 9 and the 6, we add them together and get a 15. And if this sum, 15, is divisible by 3 evenly, then we know it's divisible by 3. 15 is divisible by 3 because 3 times 5 is 15. And it's even and divisible by 3, so yes, 6 is a factor of 96. But we have to be careful because if 3 is a factor of a number, 6 may not be. In 3 times 5 equals 15, 6 is not a factor of 15, but 3 is. And the reason is 15 is not an even number. It has to be even and divisible by 3 in order to be divisible by 6. Okay? We can use division to find if 6 is a factor of 96. We find 96 divided by 6. We ask ourselves, how many times can 6 fit into 96? Well, 6 can fit into the first digit, 9, one time, and 6 times 1 is 6. We do our subtraction and get a 3, and it's this digit's turn to come down. We ask ourselves how many times 6 can fit into 36. Well, 6 times 6 is 36. And we subtract that product and get a 0. We have no remainder. So yes, 6 is a factor of 96 because our quotient is a whole number with no remainder. So if the divisibility rules are very hard for you to remember, you still might have to learn them, but it might be quicker for you to just use division to find out if a divisor is a factor of a dividend. We can make a list of all the factor pairs for 96. We list all the numbers that when multiplied together will equal 96. And our factor pairs are a 1 and 96, because that is a product of 96. Another pair is 2 and 48. They have a product of 96. And so does 3 and 32, 4 and 24, 6 and 16, and 8 and 12. So some factors for 96 will be numbers from 1 to 96. It's the numbers starting with 1, and all the numbers between to 96. That would make 96 as a product. And divisibility and factors are related because a number is divisible by each of its factors. Here's the factors of 12, 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4, and 12 is divisible by its factors. Here we have the 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. We can also do 12 divided by 4 is 3, and 12 divided by 6 is 2, and 12 divided by 12 is 1. So these in the blue are the divisors. We can stop checking for factors when the divisor is greater than or equal to the quotient. So we knew 1 and 12, 2 and 6 and 3 and 4 were factors of 12, well, these are just repeating each other again. And see, the divisor is greater than the quotient, so we didn't need to list these. These divisors are greater than the quotient, so we could have just listed these and had the factors for 12. And there's no divisibility rule for 1 because all numbers are divisible by 1. There's no divisibility rule for zero because we can't divide by zero. We can't divide some objects into zero groups. If we can divide a number by two twice, then that number is divisible by four. Is 28 divisible by four? We take the 28, we divide it by two, we get 14, and we divide it by two again. So we're dividing it by 2 twice. Now we take the 14 divided by 2 and it equals 7. So yes, we were able to divide it twice by 2. That means 28 is divisible by 4. Is 52 divisible by 4? 
we divide it by 2, we get a 26. We take the 26 and divide that by 2 and get a 13. So yes, 52 is divisible by 4. Is 2 a factor of 36? Well, let's look at our divisibility rules. Well, if the dividend or the number is even, then it's divisible by 2. 36 is an even number, so yes, 2 is a factor of 36. Is 3 a factor of 36? Let's look at our divisibility rules. It's divisible by 3 if the sum of the dividend's digits is divisible by 3, or the sum of the number's digits is divisible by 3. So let's see if the sum is divisible by 3. We would take the 3 and the 6, and we would add them together and get a 9. And yes, 3 plus 6 is equal to 9, and 9 is divisible by 3. So 3 is a factor of 36. Is 4 a factor of 36? Let's look at the rule. It is if the dividend or that number can be divided by 2 twice. So yes, we can do 36 divided by 2, which equals 18, and then take the 18 and divide it by 2, which equals 9. And they divide evenly, so yes, 4 is a factor of 36. Is 5 a factor of 36? Let's look at the rules. In order to be a factor of 36, the last digit of that number or that dividend will be a 0 or a 5. 36 ends with a 6. So no, 36 doesn't have a last digit of 0 or 5, so 5 is not a factor of 36. Is 6 a factor of 36? Let's take a closer look at the divisibility rule. If the number, the dividend, is even and divisible by 3, and to be divisible by 3, the sum of the dividend's digits is divisible by 3. So let's see what happens. So 36 is even, so it, it fits that part. Is it divisible by 3? We would have to add the 3 plus 6 to get a 9. And we did it before. We found that 3 is a factor of 36. 36 is even, and it's divisible by 3. 3 plus 6 is 9, and 9 divided by 3 is 3. It divides evenly. So yes, 6 is a factor of 36. Is 7 a factor of 36? Well, 7's not in our divisibility rules as far as in this part right here. But for other numbers as divisors, the quotient will be a whole number with no remainder. So if we don't see our number listed here, we just see if, when we divide, if the quotient is a whole number with no remainder. And when we do 36 divided by 7, we get a 5 remainder 1. So no, 7 is not a factor of 36 because it has a remainder when we did division. Is 8 a factor of 36? Well, I don't see 8 on our list here, so we're going to have to use division and see if our quotient is a whole number with no remainder. When we do the division, 36 divided by 8, we see how many times 8 can fit into 36. It fits in 4 times, and 8 times 4 is 32. When we do our subtraction, we get a remainder of 4. So no, 8 is not a factor of 36 because it has a remainder. Is 9 a factor of 36? The divisibility rule for 9 is if the sum of the digits of the number or the dividend is divisible by 9, then it will be. The sum of the digits would be 3 plus 6 equals 9. Is 9 divisible by 9? Yes, 9 divided by 9 is 1. So 9 is a factor of 36. And if you have your multiplication facts memorized, you would know that 9 times 4 is 36, or 6 times 6 
is 36, and you would know if they were a factor right away. So I'll have a picture of our divisibility rules on my Facebook page, and I think I'll post it to Twitter. Our next lesson, 5.3, is going to be word problems with common factors. Stay focused, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.